of your photos. If you have something that's underexposed or overexposed or looks flat and just uninteresting or doesn't have enough contrast, um, then you can fix it by using some of these techniques. So I'm going to start by opening a file. Now the first thing I'm going to show you how to do is to clone an object. And you can use the clone tool to either add objects or take them away. So first what you want to do is change this into a layer by double clicking it. Okay, now zoom in by either moving the slider or holding your Alt key down and using the scroll wheel on your mouse. Now what I want to do is take this mustard off of my son's shirt. So what I would do is click the clone tool and hold down the Alt key and click next to it. And then you would erase it by going over it like this. Click next to this and erase it and it'll make it look just like this shirt over here. Now one thing that I found by using this recording software is that for some reason I can't use the clone tool while Camtasia is recording. So if you just take my word for it, clicking next to this and then going like this makes it look exactly what's in those little crosshairs. So that's how you use the clone tool. Now the next thing I'm going to do is adjust highlights and shadows. So to do that, we're going to go up to Image, Adjustments, Shadows and Highlights. Now when this window comes up, it'll have some default settings and generally those aren't right. So what you can do is, oh and show more options uh, by default, it's like this, but if you click show more options, that'll pop down and you have a lot more to work with. So um, in the shadows, you can lighten the shadows and adjust the tonal width. Okay. And if you want to not overdo it on the shadows. And a way that you can make it look a little more natural is by bumping up the radius a bit. And, and then toning down the highlights. So what you can do is just mess around with these and figure out what you think looks best. And so there's mid-tone contrast. Moving it down takes away the contrast. Moving it up adds more contrast. That looks a little more natural. Okay. And of course you can save as defaults if that's what you want to do. And click OK. And there we've adjusted the highlights and shadows. So we have more detail in the dark areas and the lighter areas aren't quite so bright. <clears throat> now the next thing I'm going to do is contrast. So to adjust contrast, you go Image, Adjustments, Brightness, Contrast. So Brightness, I like to brighten it up a little bit because I plan on adding some vignetting around the edge. And give it a little more contrast. Not too much. And click OK. OK. So now that we've done contrast, I'm going to show you how to sharpen the image. Um, now, when we do pictures of people, generally you don't want to sharpen the whole thing, but maybe just want to sharpen their eyes or their mouth. So I'm going to show you how to do the eyes. I'm going to hold down Alt and use my scroll wheel to zoom in. And what I'm going to do is use lasso tool. Go around the eye. And then hold down the shift key. If you hold down shift while you draw around the other eye, then it will allow you to select both eyes. Okay, now to sharpen, we're going to go up to filter, 
sharpen and unsharp mask. Now I usually put the threshold at about three and the radius at three. Now the radius kind of depends on the resolution of your photo. If it's a really low resolution, you're gonna to wanna to move it down to about one. And so then I adjust the amount. And as you can see right here, you can see the sharpness change as I go up. See, that's all the way, and that's all the way down. So go up just until it looks about right, not too unnatural. About 50, okay. And now that you're done, you can hold down Control and D, and that's to deselect the eyes. Now we're going to do a selective focus. So I'm going to scroll back out. The selective focus is a pretty handy tool to use for when you want to keep one area in focus and blur the background. It makes a shallower depth of field. So the way you do that is to use the quick selection tool. And what you're going to do is draw around the area that you want in focus. Okay, and then when you're done with that, you're going to click on the Refine Edge button. And here you can choose what kind of backgrounds you want to see it on. Uh, I like to use on um, black. Now what you're going to do here is do the feathering. And what that does is it keeps it from having such a rough edge. it to be about 75 and then you can smooth the edges as well I'm gonna do about 35 but when you're done with that you click OK okay and then what you're gonna do is save it as an alpha channel so click on the channels tab and then click on this little box with the white circle inside it's saving the selection as a channel so it says alpha 1 so we're going to go back to layers and I'm going to duplicate the background layer so, duplicate layer okay And now, what we're going to do is give it some blur. Filter, blur, and lens blur. And that opens up another window where you can make further adjustments. Now, what you're going to do here is make sure that the source in this depth map area is your alpha 1 layer. And make sure the invert is checked. Without invert, just your selection is blurry, so you're going to invert it. So, change the radius for the focus. Let's see. But generally, you don't want to go too high with it. See, down to zero, it's not even blurry in the background. So, I'm going to do. Now that you're done, you can push Control D to deselect that part of his face. Right click over here to flatten image. And that part is done. That's how you do selective focus. Now, what we're going to do is uh, some vignetting. So, we're going to do a layer, new layer, and OK. And use the elliptical marquee tool, which is this one right here. Uh, with the elliptical marquee tool, you need to draw an ellipsis, like a little oval, and position it. Okay, now click in the corner, select inverse, okay, and then click in the corner again and do a 
fill. This is where you're going to add the dark color. So, color, choose black. Black is also six zeros, as you can see here. Click OK. And OK. And it turns to black. And what you can do is, while you're on this way, you have this layer highlighted, you can adjust the opacity. So you can make it lighter or darker. Try not to make it too dark. Okay. And again, Control D to deselect. Right click over here on one of these layers and flatten image. And you're done. That's quite an improvement.